So you go from the Pharaoh to King Solomon. Two people that were given much wealth and power in this world, but that reacted to that power in completely opposite ways. One of them was intoxicated by it. The other one was humbled by it. One of them used his power to only gain more power. The other one used his power only to do good and to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to spread goodness. And subhanAllah, what it tells you is that it's not about that we as people, it's not about what we have, what's given to us or what our circumstances are. At the end of the day, it's about who you are at your core. Sulaiman alayhi salam had his heart and his mind in the right place and obviously he was divinely inspired by Allah. Whereas Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, only distanced himself further from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I want to talk about Fir'aun, but I don't just want to talk about Fir'aun in the capacity of a man that lived in the past that was a horrible human being. Were there other Fir'auns, were there other Pharaohs that walked the face of the earth after Fir'aun? Yes, who are they? Please don't point to me. Who are they? In our ummah, the most prominent Fir'aun, the most prominent Pharaoh was who? Abu Jahl. The Prophet ﷺ called Abu Jahl the Fir'aun of this ummah, the Pharaoh of this nation. So there are other Pharaohs, people that came after Fir'aun, that are Pharaohs in their behavior, not necessarily in their title. They act like Fir'aun. They, they live like Fir'aun. They internalize power like Fir'aun. Okay? And at the end of the day, what we find is that there were many people that oppressed the Prophet ﷺ, many people that hurt the Muslims. But Abu Jahl was titled the Fir'aun of this Ummah, the Pharaoh of this Ummah. Why? And what I want us to really reflect on is what makes a Fir'aun? What makes a Pharaoh? And what makes this man so dangerous? Number one, the ulama say that Fir'aun contains in him the characteristic of Iblis, of the, of the devil, which is what? Pride. So he has the most satanic quality, okay, in pride. But Iblis does not have human agency. Iblis has pride, but he doesn't have human agency. Fir'aun combines the pride of Iblis with the agency of the children of Adam, and particularly the power that very few of the children of Adam would actually have. So the ability to access that pride, the ability to access those desires, the ability to wreak that evil that exists within him. Meaning imagine if Shaitan, if Iblis was a human being, if Iblis was a person, what would Iblis do on this earth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced him to a whisperer, reduced him to someone with no power. In ibadi laysa laka alayhim in sultan that my servants who have no power over them whatsoever. So Iblis is actually, the devil is actually a very weak creation because all he can do is whisper. But Fir'aun had pride and he had access. So he was able to oppress without being held accountable in this world and that's dangerous. Now here's the thing about Fir'aun and here's the thing about Abu Jahl. If you look at Fir'aun and the qualities of Fir'aun and who he is, do you think Fir'aun likes to cut little children up and, you know, carry out horrific crimes on women? Do you think Fir'aun really enjoys burning people alive? Do you think he actually found pleasure in it? Or do you think he didn't care? Probably didn't care. Because Fir'aun had no empathy. So that's number one. He had no empathy for anybody else. He was the ultimate narcissist. At the end of the day, it was all about him. Everything around Fir'aun, if you recognize it, the psychology of Fir'aun as is highlighted to us in the Qur'an, everything Fir'aun sees is either a benefit or a threat to his power. He doesn't care. I don't care about... When Musa السلام, came into his house as a child, Fir'aun didn't say, that's a cute baby, let's cut him up like we cut up the other children of Bani Israel. Musa was not a threat, perceived threat to his power. So you know what? Show him some compassion. I don't care what you do with him. It didn't matter. Fir'aun viewed the entire world through the lens of his pride and his power. Whether it was something that benefited him or emboldened that power or something that threatened that power. 
and anything that threatened the power of Fir'aun, he showed no mercy whatsoever, no empathy whatsoever. Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl, if you look through the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, this man, the crimes that he committed against the, the, the followers of the Prophet ﷺ, against the Prophet ﷺ himself, I mean, suffice it to say the way he killed Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, the first person murdered in Islam, the way he killed her was not in, in any dignified way. I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just murder. He killed her in the most humiliating way possible. Right? I mean, he used a spear and he violated Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha in the worst way possible. The man did not care. Did it slow him down at all? No. Then he moved on to Yasir, the, the, the husband of Sumayya. Then he moved on to Ammar and almost killed him too. He never slowed down at any point because Abu Jahl saw everything around him as a threat. It's either of benefit or it's of threat. Abu Jahl didn't used to kill people the way that he did after Islam, before Islam, because there wasn't a threat, a perceived threat to his power. But once things started getting in the way, the viciousness of Abu Jahl showed itself. Why? Because he felt threatened and all Abu Jahl worshipped was himself. At the end of the day, a pharaoh worships himself. Doesn't care about anyone or anything around him. Everything in my face is either a benefit or a threat to my power. Whereas Sulaiman alayhi salam, this righteous king, internalized that power not as a means of ennobling him, but rather as an amana, as a trust. The difference between a Sulaiman and a Fir'aun is that Sulaiman recognizes one powerful dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله There is no might or power except that which belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None. I have no power. If I have been entrusted with agency over people, if someone is at my mercy, that is merely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, testing me to see if I will show mercy. Irhamu man fil ard, irhamukum man fil sama. Show mercy to those who are under you on this in this earth. Allah will show mercy to you from the heavens. Allah is testing me with my power. If you think about a person who finds himself in a situation where he takes advantage of others or harms others, an oppressor, a valim. Think about the dictator and think about the domestic abuser. A person thinks they have power. And when they perceive threat to that power and to that pride, no one and nothing else matters to them. They will bulldoze anything in their way. And if you think about Fir'aun and how he got to that point, and if Fir'aun was ever moved on the inside, and subhanAllah, we see some of the dictators of the world today. And you wonder, like you have kids, and you have no problem gassing children, dumping chemical weapons on children, mowing people down and killing people in the thousands. How does a human being become that cruel? It's not that those people woke up one day and said, you know what, let's go kill a bunch of children. It's that when my power is threatened, forget about everybody else. There is no empathy with anyone else. Now, finally, what is the core difference? Or how do we internalize this ourselves? If you look at the Prophet wasallam, the Messenger of Allah wasallam, could have claimed, could have claimed a power over his followers like no other. Think about it. Even the ambassadors of Quraysh who had seen Abu Jahl and seen Abu Lahab and seen these vicious people, when they saw the Prophet wasallam in Sulh Hudaybiyah, and in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, and they saw the adoration that his followers had for him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did they say? They said we've never seen a man this adored by his followers. What the Prophet sallam commanded over his ummah was something that Kisra in Persia, Khosro, did not have over his followers. Was something that Herakl, Heraclius of Rome, did not have over his followers. What the Prophet ﷺ had of love and adoration and obedience 
from his followers, none of those men had. But the Prophet ﷺ was the only one of those men that didn't abuse his power. He didn't betray that adoration that he had from his followers. Instead, he demonstrated a supreme empathy with them. He doesn't have to care about them anymore. They adore him وسلم, They will excuse all of his actions. The Prophet وسلم, doesn't need to walk with the widows and the poor and the orphans. He doesn't need to listen to the, you know, the, the, the slaves and the former slaves of the Ummah. He doesn't need to listen to any of them. He could have ignored them all and they would have made excuses for him وسلم. Why? Because he's Rasulullah. At this point, he's commanded all of their hearts. But when the Prophet وسلم, had his ultimate power, before he leaves this world. We're talking post Fatih Mecca, post conquest of Mecca. His enemies are at his mercy, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The people that tortured him and killed his family. What did he do with them? Showed them supreme mercy. Put his head on the back of his riding, you know, on his nose on the back of his riding animal as he came into Mecca. Not as a proud man, saying, La tathriba alaykum al don't worry, all of you are safe. There is nothing that I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to do anything to you. In his supreme power in this world, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the power of influence, the power of military, the power over his followers of adoration, all of that. How did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recognize it? All as an amana from Allah. In those last moments, SubhanAllah, think of the last moments of Fir'aun as he's drowning and the water enters into his lungs. Think how humiliating that is. How humiliating. I, and, and then those moments he says, I believe in the Lord of the children of Israel. I believe in the Rabb of Bani Israel. How humiliating. As he's looking around and seeing his followers drowning around him. And Jibreel alayhi salam kicking him in the face. And he sees his last moments drowning. And he says, I believe in the Rabb of Bani Israel. And it meant nothing. Abu Jahl. With... The most, the weakest of the ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, climbing onto his chest. What was the last thing Abu Jahl saw in this world? It's actually quite amazing. The last thing Abu Jahl saw in this world was Abdullah bin Mas'ud standing on his chest. <laughs> About to end his life for all the atrocities that he committed. He told Abdullah bin Mas'ud, you've climbed a difficult mountain, you shepherd of sheep. Still arrogant. He says, who's winning the battle? And he says, Al-ghalabatu lillah wa li rasulillah ya adu Allah. Victory belongs to Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi you enemy of Allah, you enemy of Allah. That was the last thing he saw in this world. Can you imagine how humiliating that is? Allah put him back in his place. The person that he oppressed standing on his chest humiliated him. And he was still arrogant in those moments. But lastly, look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I mean seriously, you have everything. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam could have at the very least bought a nice palace for himself. And said, you know what guys, I've served you for 20 years. I got you back to Mecca. You have your homes. You have the ummah. No more wars. I'm going to wait until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes my life now. To the last moment, he was struggling with them. To the last moment, he cared about them. To the last moment, he was, he was, he was tending to their poor, tending to their orphans, tending to the women of his ummah. To the very last breath. And what does he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Hajjat al wadaa in his farewell? He asks the people, did I convey the message to you properly? Did I do my job? SubhanAllah. He's concerned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he didn't do right by that power. He didn't do right by what Allah gave him. He's actually afraid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did I do my job with you? Did I do my job? And when they all give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that affirmation, what does he say? Allah manni balakht, Allah mafashhad, oh Allah, I delivered the message, oh Allah, bear witness, oh Allah, I delivered the message, oh Allah, bear witness. And imagine on the day of judgment. May Allah make us amongst them who show up when the Prophet ﷺ is brought as a witness and he sees this ummah <laughs> all saying that you did your job, Ya Rasulullah, you did not abuse your power. You never became a tyrant. You never stopped caring about your ummah. You never stopped caring about people. 
You never were distracted by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us as well to carry those beautiful qualities of our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of, of King Solomon, of Sulaiman alayhi salam, of the prophets that came before. And may Allah protect us from pride and narcissism and evil that is manifested in the man of Fir'aun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being pharaohs ourselves to those that he has placed in our mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to do right by them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not test us with the good of this world or with the hardships of this world. Allahumma ameen.